Welcome to another Monash chemistry video tutorial and last time we looked at interconverting between wavelength and frequency this time we're going to have a look at interconverting between energy and frequency energy usually just has the capital letter E and frequency again with the Greek letter nu you might see this with an F occasionally the wave nature of light actually does not correctly explain the distribution of wavelengths emitted by a glowing object. This was called black body radiation. Max Planck realized that he could explain this phenomenon by assuming that energy comes in packets called quanta. Einstein then went on to use Planck's idea to explain the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect was an observation that when you shone light on a metal surface you could get it to eject electrons. But it was only above a certain frequency that you would see this phenomenon. Below a certain cutoff point you wouldn't see the ejection of any electrons whatsoever. And Einstein proved that light had these properties of quanta, not just waves. Okay, So you had to have a certain amount of energy, you had to get over a certain threshold before you could eject an electron. And so he concluded that photons have an energy proportional to frequency. And the formula you can use is E equals H nu, where H is Planck's constant and has the value 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. So if you get a question like this, determine the energy of a mole of photons with a frequency of 1.66 times 10 to the 17 hertz or minus, seconds to the minus 1, you can solve it using this equation. Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 multiplied by one point six six times ten to the power of seventeen. Plug that into your calculator and you should get an answer which looks hopefully whoops something like this. And energy when you're using SI units is given in joules. Now the question actually asks to determine the energy of a mole of photons. Here we've given the energy for one photon. And so to answer the question properly, we need to multiply this value by Avogadro's number. Okay, This is the number of anything in a mole. So we multiply this by Avogadro's number, and that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That should give you a value, which hopefully looks something like this. Joules per mole. 